Hey everyone! At the end of the last episode, we had just returned to Rocky in Mexico after taking a work trip to the United States. Unfortunately, we also returned to a pretty severe gas shortage. The state we were in, Jalisco, was one of the most severely affected states, and we were getting pretty bummed as it was preventing us from exploring the area around Guadalajara because we were afraid we were going to run out of gas. So I told Kendrick, if we have to be stuck somewhere, I'd rather be stuck at the beach. Might as well work on our tans. Of course, that meant we had to find enough gas to drive 200 miles to get to the beach. After a few days of searching, I finally found an open station. Trying for gas again? We'll see what happens. Look how close I am. Woo! And luckily, they weren't rationing either, so I got a full tank in the car and decided to use one of our water jugs for a new gas can. Got the car topped off and got more gas on the floorboard. That greenish blue container is one of our water containers, but uh, right now gas is a little harder to come by than water, so uh, small sacrifice. Yay, we should be able to leave here tomorrow. Since the gas can sits on the tongue of the trailer, I decided to write non-potable water, in Spanish of course, to deter any would-be thieves. Driving through Mexico, we've come across a lot of quotas, or toll roads, which can really start to add up, especially with the third axle of the trailer. And this stretch of road was no different. As we got closer and closer to the coast, we began to see huge groves of palm trees, until finally we hit the ocean. And it was totally worth the drive. Fortunately, the Pacific coast seemed pretty unaffected by the gas shortage. We decided to stay on the scenic Highway 200 and enjoy all of the beautiful beaches as we made our way south. Plus, we were able to find some amazing and cheap RV parks along the coast that we want to share with you. First, we landed in the town of Malaque at the Laguna del Tule Hotel and RV Park. After settling into a beautiful shady spot tucked away amongst all the massive Canadian snowbird motorhomes, we decided to acquaint ourselves with the area the best way we know how, with food and drinks. After a while, a few of the long-term residents picked up their instruments and entertained us with some music. I have to admit that after a long work trip with a lot of travel, this felt kind of like a well-deserved vacation. The next day, we worked on our tans with a long walk on the beach, where we enjoyed the warm waters, the ocean breeze, and watching the birds dive bomb into the water for their next meal. Which made us pretty hungry. We also walked into the small town of Barra de Navidad. As with most small Mexican towns we've seen, the roads were narrow and rough, but lined with vibrantly colored buildings. We walked into a place called Roger's Bar. Roger greeted us from his natural habitat behind the bar and told us to help ourselves to any beers that we would like out of the bridge. When it's all said and done, Roger counts your empty bottles and tells you the damage. Combine this no frills service with the bar having Jack Daniels on hand, and you get a bar that my Uncle Roger wouldn't mind putting his name on. We pet the adorable resident chihuahua on our way out and hit the road again. We then came to a restaurant, Barra Galleria. It's owned by an expat from the US who also has his photography on display. His wife has quite the green thumb and keeps up the oasis-like garden surrounding the seating area. Here, I got a proper tequila tasting. Step one, take your time and relax. Step two, swirl the tequila to release the aromas. Step three, again, take your time. 
Then take a sip of the tequila and hold it to your mouth for a moment. Step four, evaluate. Very good. And after dinner, we were served marshmallows next to a campfire that we got to roast ourselves. Kind of like if we were camping. The next RV park we stopped at was Rancho Bougainvillea's. We arrived at Rancho B just before sunset. So after we got the camper all set up, we headed down to the private beach to take some photographs and watch the sunset. Rancho B was exactly what we needed. It was quiet and secluded, offering us a bit of peace that I think we had been missing. And oh my gosh, the animals. There were three adorable dogs that we all know Kendrick loved. There was the best cat ever, which stole my heart. And of course, sheep. Because I mean, you can't have a ranch without sheep. We planned to leave the next day, but the owner, Sandy, offered to take several of us to a farmer's market up in the mountains. So we stuck around. Mandy and I hopped in the back of the truck for the ride and enjoyed the wind in our hair. Of the many things Mexico gets right, one of my favorites is being able to drink a beer while sitting in a lawn chair in the back of a moving truck. No matter where you are in Mexico, a taco is never far away. So we began with tacos and a bit of exploring. All of the farmer's markets we've seen so far have been amazing, and this one was no different. After picking up some groceries we needed, I thought it would be great to pick up one item that we had no idea what it was. So I found this grayish brown fruit, which ended up being called a mame. Now that we had plenty of rabbit food, we needed some real food. And by that, I mean meat. So we stopped by not one, but three carnicerias. One for pork. One for beef. And one for chicken. Now, they like their meat cut extremely thin in Mexico, so it takes a lot of explaining to get things cut the way you want. Eventually, they figure it out. All right, we went to the market today and I have no idea what this thing is. And so now we're all gonna try it. I'm gonna go on Team Green. Kendrick? I think it's going to look like a mango. Thing. So we I have know. like two we'll on see. Team Orange and two on Team Green. Whoa, it is orange. Team wow. Orange wins. Really? Look, here's a little... <laughs> it's like an orange avocado. It tastes like a pumpkin. We had planned to leave the next day, but everyone was headed to a famous surfer beach, La Ticla. So we decided to stick around. While we don't surf, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to photograph it. We had a blast shooting the surfers, the waves, and the ocean birds. And of course, we couldn't pass up the chance to try new food. Agua chiles, which is just really spicy shrimp, and chilequiles, which is a breakfast dish using old tortillas. We had planned to leave the next day, but it was Super Bowl Sunday, so we stuck around. The owner, Sandy, was planning a Super Bowl Sunday party along with all the great friends we've met so far at this park, and we couldn't pass that up. I mean, what's better than watching American football with your new Canadian friends in Mexico. So we all came together for a good old-fashioned Super Bowl potluck as the sun set over the ocean. It was an amazing group of people to experience it with. But eventually, we really did have to leave. I mean, we have a destination to get to. Which brings us to our third RV park, Casa Rayo del Sol. 
Mexico's windy up and down Highway 200 makes for really slow progress. It's always nice after a long day of driving to arrive at a peaceful RV park on the beach and feel at home. Casa Rayo del Sol, run by Canadians Mark and Lorraine, was just that. And once again, we were lured into staying more days than originally planned. The general vibe of the park was simply peaceful, with balanced rocks and seashells, hammocks overlooking the beach, and beautiful flowers. I was in a photographer's paradise. And I even got out after dark to shoot the stars. There were also a few local children who liked to play in the area. They got a kick out of me flying my drone and trying to talk to Kendrick in Spanish. I know it looks like all we've been doing is eating and drinking our way down the coast of Mexico, but this time has actually allowed us to focus on getting back into shape. We've been enjoying some miles of barefoot running along the beach. And Mandy has even been doing her crazy Jillian Michaels workout videos. It's felt great to finally get our bodies moving again. One of the best things about our recent travel along the coast is definitely the friends we've met along the way. Talking to people from all over the world and asking them why they're doing what they're doing and living life the way they are has been some of the most valuable conversation Hello. we've had. And I know these people our friends will have for life. So here's to slowing things down a bit and enjoying our time. Love and light. And watching the Derv, Derv's, Derv's Vibe Bomb. The Derv's Vibe Bomb. The Derv's Vibe Bomb.